looking for a simple 4K video streaming setup directly into your computer, I'm gonna be sharing my findings and experiences among the leading options and offer what I found to be the best option. As always, links and chapter time codes to everything discussed will be in the description below. Please go ahead and click those links as they do help to support the growth of the channel. Alrighty, so there's a few ways to achieve a live 4K video setup. And as you might've imagined, it ranges on the scale of affordable to pricey. But by far the simplest and most cost-effective solution comes in the way of today's sponsor. The OBSBOT Meet 2. It's an AI-powered 4K webcam that's smaller than your average coffee pod. It comes in three snazzy colors, cloud white, space gray, and aurora green. So this little guy does quite indeed pack the punch, as you'll see in a moment, with a true 4K resolution from an upgraded half-inch camera sensor, which is pretty big for a webcam. You can just snap it onto its included magnetic stand and just hang it on your monitor. After that, just plug it in and you're good to go. That magnetic mount really makes it a breeze to adjust the angle to get it just right. And it also includes a quarter inch tripod thread to mount and use like you would any other camera. It's also got a little magnetic privacy cover, which is a super nice little touch to keep the lens protected when it's not in use. So for comparison, I've gone ahead and mounted the Meet 2 on top of my Pro camera. So I was actually super impressed with the OBSBOT app, which allows you to basically tweak and control the camera and use all the cool features. And I highly recommend you go ahead and you download that. It's called the OBSBOT Center app. And I can see being pretty useful taking advantage of that 4K resolution. The OBSBOT Center app also comes with these sort of auto framing modes or check it out, if we turn it on and we click close up, it's gonna basically frame me, it's gonna use that resolution it has and it's gonna always frame me up in the center. So even if I were to get out of my chair and walk away, you can see how it kind of follows me around. How far is it gonna go? It has a lot of resolution. And if I come in, it just sort of knows what to do. But the OBSPOT Center app definitely gives you a ton of control over the output of your image. If you wanted to go in there and tweak things, you can absolutely do so. And if you were curious what the auto exposure, autofocus looks like, I will take off all of my manual adjustments that I've done and I'll put back auto on everything, auto white balance, auto exposure, reset those picture profiles. So this is what the camera would do sort of out of the box under these lighting conditions versus what we saw before, which was me manually tweaking the exposure in the settings. At 129 bucks at the recording of this video, it's quite the package. Links are in the description if you wanna grab one for yourself. This is gonna make a perfect addition to my personal streaming setup as a B cam or additional camera. So the pro up version would be using a dedicated 4K camera, such as I have on my desk setup, and then taking the HDMI output from the camera, running it into the computer with an HDMI capture card. So in terms of 4K capture cards, there's a few options out there to achieve what we're trying to do by getting our 4K camera signal into our computer. So the first option and most expensive is the Rode Streamer X. The second option is called the MyPin Capture. And the last option is the Elgato 4K Camera Link. So personally, my first instinct was to go with the Rode Streamer X. Given Rode is a trusted name brand, it had that HDMI pass-through, which basically means you can send that HDMI signal into the computer, but it also has an output Output of that signal in the back of the card as well if you wanted to send it to a monitor or something else. The Rode Streamer X also offered an XLR input and some other bells and whistles. Now I was a little hesitant at first when buying this because if you look online, there is quite a bit of mixed reviews about the Rode Streamer X of things not working. I like to give products the benefit of the doubt. So I went ahead and, and bought this anyways. Boy, should I have listened to the reviews. So out of the box, using the supplied cables as they suggest, it just didn't seem to work well with the shipped firmware for me. I did get it to work, but I found it had audio sync issues and it wouldn't actually always detect the card in the native software to be able to like change settings and stuff. Okay, so I've got everything plugged in for the Rode Streamer X. And as you can see, 
It wants to update it. It tries to update it, but it fails to update it. I've tried this many, many times. Tried looking for answers online through Reddit forums. Seems a lot of people have this problem with no solution other than to send back to Rode for a different device. I've tried rebooting, I've tried different computers, I've tried different cables, and on the rare occasion, even with the current firmware, you see, could not update. Even with the current firmware that's shipped out of the box, I can't actually get in here. It's supposed to sort of show up here so you can tweak it, but I can't even get it. It just wants me to try to update it. I did manage to get it working in OBS, but I found it was out of sync with the audio for some reason from the camera. So again, maybe this is an amazing tool, but I didn't really get a chance to fully test it with all these issues. It will be going back to the store. So with that said, I'm not saying the Streamer X is a bad product. I never really even got a chance to use it or test it thoroughly. Kind of a bummer. Let's move on to the other two options, which come in around half the price point. Okay, so the next 4K HDMI capture card that I have used in the past was the Elgato 4K Cam Link. You know, it is a trusted name brand and it does have mostly good reviews. It is a small little unit, but what was something of a deal breaker for me, it was kind of like an all-in-one adapter where you just plug your HDMI directly into it and then plug that into a USB port. So for me, I didn't like the fact that all this hardware will be sort of stacked together, sticking out the back of my dock. There could be potential heating issues and I didn't get that HDMI pass-through that I quite like to have if I'm doing a setup like this. However, if you can stretch your budget just a tiny bit more, I have found what I think is the most ideal solution, the MyPin 4K capture. I immediately felt like this was the happy medium between the Elgato 4K Cam Wing and the Rode Streamer X because it has that more pro feel to it with HDMI pass-through and it is capable of capturing at up to 4K 60, which is a higher spec than both the Rode and the Elgato. I really like the small box form factor with those front RGB LEDs is a nice touch. In my mind, this will allow heat to disperse better and as well allows for better cable management, allowing the device to sit on my desk, running in and out in a nice and organized way instead of being like a clunky adapter like the Elgato would have been. Okay, so this is the final setup now. I added in a USB-C 10 gigabit hub for all the peripherals and we can see the MyPin 4K capture card in the back there. I actually quite like when it is intaking the feed, how it does kind of light up like that. It's probably got a higher quality internal 4K capture given this higher spec. This opens the doors if you want to capture 4K gameplay at 60 frames per second, and it's got more space to disperse that heat. So for those reasons, this is what I've chosen to go with for my 4K streaming solution. So that's what I'm working with now for my main pro camera in combination with the Obspot Meet 2, which is an excellent all-in-one 4K solution if you don't have the budget for sort of a more pro setup and you want something to start out. All right, so the next thing I just wanna quickly reach on if you do have one of these 4K pro setups and you are looking to use it for either live streaming or video conferencing of some sort is something called digital signal processing. If you are using a 4K capture card with a raw audio source like I am from my pro camera in the back, we can essentially use OBS for Mac or PC, sort of the, the standard in the live streaming world to apply filters to our audio track and video track if we deem it necessary to then tweak and make the feed look and sound its best. Okay, so to get your audio sounding good, what we do is apply filters in OBS. You have your audio source here. I would click it, hit filters, and let's just maximize this window here. So you see our mic is currently hitting uh, around negative 15 dB. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a gain filter. And that's gonna allow us to basically amplify our microphone and get it much louder. So I'm gonna set that to about 10 dB. So now you can see where you want it landing is about negative five. The second filter we're gonna put on here to make it sound better is a noise suppression filter. By default, this one's pretty good, but if you really wanna fine tune it, you can select the speaks noise filter, which actually lets you select how much noise suppression. As I'm writing this slider here, you can sort of hear it doing its thing. 
I'll leave it around negative 25 for my specific scenario. And the last thing I'm gonna add in here is a limiter. I'm gonna put the limiter around negative 0.5. And what the limiter does is essentially it'll stop your audio from clipping. So these are three really basic filters that are a really good starting point to take your audio from what it was. This is what the raw audio was sounding like before we put the filters on it. And this is the audio with the filters on it. So now it sounds good in OBS. Okay, so to send our now processed and sounding good audio out of OBS and into another application. If you wanted to video call or stream in a different software, you would use a virtual audio out. So you can do this with this free software here called VB Audio, link will be in the description. So go ahead and download and install this for Windows or Mac. And after you've installed and rebooted OBS, what you're gonna do in OBS is go to your preferences under the settings, you're gonna select audio and under advanced here, you're gonna select the monitoring device to VB cable. Now this is what we just installed. This is our virtual audio out. So we're gonna select that. Now we have to tell our processed audio mic here where all the filters are to go through that virtual cable. So to do that, we're gonna make sure processed mic demo is set to monitor and output. So this will now send the processed audio through that VB cable. So now what you can do is open up another streaming software. This is Zoom and underneath audio, all you're gonna do is for microphone, you're gonna select that VB cable. So now it's feeding the audio from OBS into Zoom. Now you can do this with any video conferencing software. You're using Google Meets, Teams, FaceTime. It's really cool. Now you're gonna have that clean and clear processed audio for your camera, select your capture device or your webcam. You can do this with the OBSPOT webcam as well. If you wanted to also apply filters to your video stream, you can do the same thing. You can hit start virtual camera. And similarly, when you go back into the settings, let's say of Zoom, what you would select is the OBS virtual camera. So that's how you can apply filters to the camera as well. All right, so there you have it. My newly upgraded streaming setup with both a pro option as well as that all-in-one affordable option if you don't have the budget to spend. If you're curious to see some of my other desk setup items, I urge you to check out one of my videos where we tour my desk or give a tour of the studio itself. This is the Future Space Collective where we explore the world of products for imagination.